This video is the second part for the 66 acre property. Last time I talked about the northwest corner and the ridge, the steep ridge that runs towards the center of the property. This is kind of more like the north to northeast corner. Um, so this is the steep ridge from last time. Uh, there's a really big deep bottom uh, that kind of runs through the middle here. And then when we come up to the the northeastern part. This is a little bit of elevated uh, west southwest facing slope. Um, so what we what we did here is a lot of the movement tends to be you know on this upper end. And he said a lot of the movement he sees uh, follows this ridge and goes around the bottom of this draw, which tends to follow what you know deer naturally want to do with draws. So um, essentially, what we're trying to do here is create some more bedding on this northern end um, use the existing travel from the southern end and kind of meet in the middle here with uh, a new food plot he's going to use the bulldozer while he has access to it to create a new food plot down in here um, this uh, western southwest facing slope is it has a lot of good mature oaks in here um, so what we want to do is uh, take out some of the junk trees um, drop some, you know, maybe girdle and hack and squirt as well as hinge cut some of the smaller trees and create these three bedding pockets um, as well as uh, add some deer trails coming in to just, just to make that movement a little more predictable for him. And then we also wanted to add in some just TSI pockets where he's going to girdle and hack and squirt a few areas in here just to thicken up the cover. We didn't really want to drop trees and turn them into bedding areas necessarily, but we wanted uh, some additional security cover. So by girdling and hack and squirt, you know, hack and squirting some of these trees will let in some sunlight, especially in these two areas where it's gonna get pretty good afternoon sun. Um, and so ideally what they should do is kind of maneuver from uh, north to, to south or sort of southeast um, from the upper end as well as along the bottom of this draw on the lower end and uh you know make it down here to this food plot where he's going to have a mock scrape out you know in the middle kind of near this this bend because it's sort of a horseshoe shape you know u-shaped food plot and um he's got a spring so uh a natural spring that'll he's essentially going to turn into a, like a watering hole um and then he's going to put in a new uh a new trail, a perimeter trail here with the bulldozer and push some of the trees over to create some screening. And ideally he'll be able to hunt this portion of the property with, you know, any west uh, or even south wind other than a southeast. I mean, right here he could literally come in right off the hay field with any westerly wind and sit the stand really low impact um, as well as walk the trail along the, the perimeter, this perimeter trail and he can hunt here with any westerly wind. And then up here, especially um, if he's got a south wind, uh, southwest or, uh, or due south um, would work for this setup. He could do a southeast, but um, his access is gonna be blowing his scent this direction, so it's not recommended. Um, he'd be better off just hunting, you know, uh, here and here with a, a south or southwest wind. Um, so that's just, uh, you know, another portion of the property. Obviously it's a little different from that ridge that we looked at from the Northwest side, um, but still effective, low impact, uh, setups. And then I forgot to mention this blind, um, this is going to be good for, uh, a North Northwest or West wind, um, where you can literally just pop in from the hay field. So that gives them another option. Um, where if he's got a little bit of a northerly wind direction, he can still sit this uh, this food plot. And one of the other things uh, to mention is, you know, the thermals are going to want to tend to naturally flow down into this bottom. So uh, the the thing that I that I was recommending is these these stands would be better in the morning, um, just because as as things heat up. Uh, you know, your, your thermals are going to want to drift up, up the, up the ridge this way a little bit. Um, so if you're hunting 
here or here or here with uh, an, uh, any westerly wind direction or maybe south southwesterly wind direction your thermals are going to want to naturally drift this this way as the sun comes up and so the combination of thermals and wind your scent should kind of pull up this direction away from your property away from your bedding away from your food um, if he decides to hunt in the evening um, you know what i recommended was just make sure that you have a steady breeze uh, probably more than five miles an hour to hopefully help mitigate some of that uh, that thermal drop in the evenings um, that's also part of the reason why i recommended a blind down here um, so it still gives them a, an evening option so that's just another uh, like variation of how we designed this portion of the property compared to the previous portion of the, of the property.